Hey, I'm Laura, and recently I got the opportunity to go to Texas and visit the set of the hit series The Chosen. Ahead of season three, I spoke with some of the cast and crew of the series to get their thoughts on the new season and what it's like playing such iconic figures. I hope you enjoy. Kirk, thank you so much for chatting with us. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And in the role that you play, you're part of the Roman Empire, you're bringing to life, you know, a, a group of people aside of the story that are really wrestling with who Jesus is and his effect on, on culture, on the world. What's your, your process in, I suppose, bringing that side of the story to life? Well, I think on the surface, we're the antagonist, right? But you got to convince me, right? And I think that's a great position and a fun position to be in because if you just want me to listen and follow what you say, I don't think it's going to mean as much to you if I just go, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll follow you. I think if I challenged you and said, well, why should I? Well, what does this mean? Why does it mean that? How is that supposed to, what does that mean to me? Then it makes you better and it makes me better. So it's fun to challenge it, try to understand it, try to get underneath it mm. and try to get it. Cause there's this whole bunch of people over here that are just like digging it and having a good time. It seems, I don't know, their parties aren't that great. I think the Roman parties are a little <laughs> bit better, but you know, they're over there. Mm. And so I don't know, convince me, right. show me, let me ask questions, you know? So you I, like, I think it's fun to play that. Yeah, and do you feel like it's kind of true in life that we need to be a little bit more that way, I suppose, asking questions of the ideas that we see? Uh, yeah. I mean, that that's just... I'm huge that way as a person. I'm not going to just believe what you tell me. I need to understand for myself. And if I understand for myself and I'm on board, then... I just think, like I said, it makes both of us stronger. So yeah, we should all question. Don't just believe because you have to believe or because your parents told you to believe. Believe for yourself, challenge it, ask questions, pick it apart, analyze it, look at it and decide why I want to do something. And then I think you've earned the right and then you're to do that and then you're really on board and it feels different. Does that make sense? Yeah, your belief would be a little bit more authentic, I suppose. Not a little bit. I think it would really be authentic because you had to earn it for yourself. Mm. Does that make sense? You had to go through the fire, in other words, as opposed to just going, oh, okay, I yeah. just believe you. So what convinced you to be part of The Chosen then? Well, there really wasn't that much convincing. I've, I've known, I've been friends with Dallas for over 20 years and been gratefully been in basically almost everything that he's done. And so uh, he asked me if I wanted to be a part of it and I'll do anything for him. And so it was a blessing, of course, anytime an actor can work as an actor, it's just an amazing gift. Mm -hmm. And so I auditioned and, you know, um, and he and others, you know, I, I was lucky enough to, to get hired and, and do the show, so yeah. yeah. It's a special thing to be part of. And a lot of people have yeah. described what Dallas and what the team are doing as truly unique, as, as him being a unicorn, you know, and such innovation being brought to The Chosen. You've known him for a long time. What can you tell us about him that maybe we, we don't know that we haven't seen through this project? Because with all his brilliance, I'm sure he has some unusual quirks as well. He's not brilliant. <laughs> or he's always been brilliant. Right. Let me put it to you that way. He's always told great stories. No one saw it though. Make sense? Mm. So he's always been doing this. So he's always been trying to tell a story that appeals to the masses, not just the Christian audience. So he was telling stories that had a message of Jesus of goodness uh, mixed. So it wasn't like a Bible thumping thing. He was always trying to just tell good stories. So he's always done this. This is nothing new for me. Mm. That, maybe that's a better way to put it. So he's always done this. It just so happens that The Chosen is about it directly. Make sense? Right, yeah. This is him not trying to be... go. To, he's getting to tell the story of the Bible directly. And so it's all come together for him. It's like, I just think he was just destined to be a part of the chosen mm -hmm. for that, for that very reason. You know, he went to Bible college and knows the Bible and 
he's like finally just like, I'm all in. I'm not going to try to make it for the, I'm just going to tell the story. And that's what he's always done so beautifully. And this just happens to be a story so close to his heart and that he knows so well. Yeah, the pieces have really come together for it, I guess. And yeah. there's, there's a way that The Chosen has impacted so many people, of course, in, in causing us to think about who Jesus was, look at the Bible narrative from a different perspective. What's that going to look like in season three? What parts of the Bible, I suppose, what aspects of Jesus' life and that of the disciples, the Romans, is season three looking at? I think season three is uh, it's heating up, you know? Jesus is coming up and more people are listening and following and therefore the opposition to that is also heating up and mm. rising. So I think season three is sort of a, a clash of those and it's also a clash of the individual characters and their individual journeys and their beliefs and how they fit into this picture. So there's a lot of like mm, kind of head headbutting head happening and then some resolution and then some not resolution. So I, th I think, you know, yeah, it's heating up. Does that mean we get a fight scene between you and Jesus or something like that? Ooh, <laughs> never thought of that. Maybe for season four? Maybe, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Why would I fight Jesus? I don't know. You're gonna have to get the writers to put it in there. We can come up <laughs> with some reason why it would have to happen. Having a fight with Jesus would probably be really cool for this reason. It would allow Gaius or anybody to face it directly. The word of God, right? Mm. Head to head. Something would be learned. Something would be gained from that. Because the more opposition there is for Jesus, the more clear he will become with his message. Make sense? Because mm. if I poke holes in it, he's got to find a way to make it clear to me and convince me of something. So that's actually a good idea. Maybe there we you should go. ask the writers to have a little showdown. Do it. And then it would make him stronger. In other words, the stronger your villain, the stronger your hero. Mm. If you got a weak villain, he, he, doesn't, he or she doesn't have much to fight against. But if your villain is going like this, then he, the hero's got to raise his A-game, right? He's got to mm. bring it. The human part of, of your, your character of this story, tell us a little bit about that side of the equation, how it's not just religiousness, I suppose, that's brought to the, to the screen, but also humanity. I just always try to bring my humanity to any scene that I'd am, I'm in. Like, what would I do if I were in that situation? And all the scenes with Matthew, for me, are that way. What would I do if I worked with somebody every day and... He was interesting and quirky and trying to understand him and be empathetic to his journey, how your parents, what's going on. The unwritten scenes are, he would ask me that stuff too, right? Mm. As an actor, you get these different scenes, but I fill them in with other scenes in my head to flush it out. Yeah, and you've done a brilliant job of that, and it's oh, been such a, a pleasure learning a little bit more about it. So thank you so much. Thank you, pleasure. Thanks for watching. Up next, writers Tyler and Ryan talk about modernizing ancient biblical characters. I think I'm struck daily by um, breathing into these characters who suddenly feel so modern when you imagine mm. what those things might have been that led them to the decisions that they, they made.